guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be doing some seed starting in regular old soil. We have been starting a lot of seeds in our hydroponic systems, um, which you guys can watch from last week's previous video. Actually, it was two weeks ago that we did that. Um, and today we're going to be just using regular old seed starting trays and soil. If you guys are new here, my name is Brittany. I'm so glad you are here. Welcome to Evercrest. If you guys like gardening content, DIY projects, and unboxing videos, hydroponics, all that kind of stuff, consider subscribing. We would love to have you join us. So to get started today, let me just show you what all I have here because I have a ton of stuff on this counter right now. Um, right here, first of all, I have some seed starting soil, which I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, this is just regular old seed starting soil that you can pick up from your local box store. I picked this up from my local Walmart. It's pretty readily available. There's also great seed starting soils from Espoma and places like that. But if you can't or if you don't want to order seed starting soil, it's perfectly fine to pick up something like this from your local Walmart like I did. The only thing you want to do is make sure you're using a seed starting soil. The difference between seed starting soil and regular soil is there's a lot more um, peat moss in this soil and a lot, it's much more light and fluffy. It's not as dense as regular soils, which allows your seeds to really be able to easily push through um, to germinate and to start roots and all that kind of stuff. So you definitely want to use a seed starting mix when you are seed starting. Okay, next I have this big bowl with soil already in it. The reason I have some soil in this bowl is because before we start planting our seeds and putting our soil in our trays right here, which is that's what these are, seed starting trays, um, we need to moisten the soil. So we need to add a little bit of water to the soil and mix it around because one thing that you'll notice is that the soil is extremely dry, like crazy bone dry. And we need to add some water to this and start getting a little bit moist before we put it in our containers because that will help us really pack the soil in and help our seeds when we go to water them in. They won't want to like float away on us. And then right here in the front, I have some seeds soaking in water. Now these seeds here are sweet pea seeds. I have a purple and a salmon colored um, sweet pea. And these seeds needed to soak for 24 hours. So I put these in sometime yesterday. Um, I actually showed you guys this process on Instagram yesterday when I did it. And they have been soaking for 24 hours, so now we can go ahead and plant them up. The reason you do that with some seeds is because um, it helps seeds that are a lot bigger germinate. Um, seeds that are really big and have a hard outer shell sometimes take a long time to germinate just because it needs that much moisture to break the seed down. So by soaking it for 24 hours before you plant them, it just gives them a jump and helps them start to germinate a lot quicker. So we're going to be planting sweet peas today. We are also going to be planting some cabbage, some bok choy, some um, broccoli, that's what it's called, some cauliflower, and some dinosaur kale. Now I have planted all of these in our hydroponic systems already this year, and I'm going to be doing like a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison with how these seeds do in regular seed starting trays versus the hydroponic systems. I think that will be really interesting, plus I like to grow a lot of cold tolerant vegetables right here in the beginning of like the very wee hours of spring. <laughs> So I would like to grow a lot of broccoli, a lot of cabbage right out the gate. Um, sometime in March, I usually like to plant them out here in zone six in Pennsylvania. So I'm going to be planting some more of these because I love to have a lot of this on hand. Um, I have also went ahead and made all of my plant tags already before I get my hands dirty. I really need to do a better job of keeping track of everything that I plant. So I'm going to go ahead and do that today. And lastly, I have a bottle of water. So just a simple spray bottle. This is what we're going to be watering our seedlings in, in the end with. And it just makes a really nice way of watering your seedlings without 
making a big mess. Like sometimes when you water with a watering, like this with seed starting trays, it kind of is like too much water at once and it can displace your seeds and your soil. So I like to water in my seeds with a spray bottle. Okay, so first step, we are going to add some water to this soil. So I'm just going to pour a little bit in at a time. And then I'm going to start mixing it in. So we just mix that water in with our soil. And the consistency that we're looking for here is that our soil holds together when we squeeze it in a fist, but it does not wring out any water. So we don't really want uh, water dripping from our hands, but we want it to hold a ball. So it's not quite there yet. It's kind of still falling apart. Like if I squeeze it, it's still falling apart. So let's add a little bit more here. We don't want our soil to be absolutely sopping wet though. That's a little too much. So get this mixed in. Okay, give it a squeeze. That's perfect. So as you can see, I squeezed it and it is holding its shape that I squeezed without any water coming out of it. So that's perfect. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start filling up our seed trays. Now our seed trays here are ones that I picked up on Amazon and these are very small um, kind of almost like plug size seed starting trays. Um, some of the more traditional seed trays that you find have a bigger uh, reservoir for your seed and for your soil. These are a little bit smaller and I'm okay with using these because I plan on bumping my seeds up to bigger pots anyway. Um, so since I'm planning on doing that anyway, I'm okay with using this size. You can definitely get something a little bigger if you would like. So these are 12 pod um, seed starting trays and we're gonna go ahead and just fill them with soil. So I just lift it over my bowl and shove the soil in. And once it looks like everything has soil in it, I then go through and I take my fingers and I just push it down real lightly because sometimes it looks like one of your um, things is full, but then you push it down and you realize like it wasn't actually as full as it looked. There's little air pockets in there. And you don't wanna push it down super hard, but just make sure that it's nice and filled. And then I go back and fill in any low spots. Okay, so you wanna fill up your trays just like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the rest of these real quick, and then we will get planting our seeds. Okay, so now that our seed starting trays are all filled up with moistened soil, we can go ahead and start planting our seeds. Now, it's really important that you follow the instructions on the back of your package as to the depth when you are planting your seeds. Um, each seed has a certain depth in the soil that it needs to be planted at. So for example, our sweet pea seeds here, which are much bigger seeds, need to be planted much deeper than say something like lettuce. Lettuce is a very tiny seed Seed, and so therefore it only needs to be planted like just below the surface and for our sweet peas we need to plant these at about a fourth of an inch deep 
Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So to do that, to make it really super easy, all I do when I'm planting my seeds is I like to take my finger and just poke a hole in the middle of the seed starting tray in the soil. And I just go whatever um, the space or whatever the depth calls for. So this one calls for about a fourth of an inch. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. And then I can drop a seed in each one of those holes and just carefully cover them over with about a fourth of an inch of soil. So the first group that we are planting up here is our purple sweet peas. So I am putting two seeds in each soil spot here. And that just helps to make sure that I get something growing in each one of these cells. Okay, so once I drop the seeds in there, then I can simply bring the dirt over top, making sure they're about a fourth of an inch under the soil. Sometimes you have to push them down a little bit further, especially with bigger seeds. You might feel like it's not quite deep enough. Just push it down a little bit more and cover it up with your soil. Okay, our first tray is all done. You guys should be super proud of me trying to label everything. I uh, planted up a bunch of um, kale and bok choy in one of my hydroponic systems, and I have no idea what's what because I didn't label it. And after that one, oh, and my herbs. I didn't label my herbs at all, and I really don't know what's what in that either. And so since I did that, I just, I didn't, I should bite the bullet and just start labeling things because it's really helpful when you know what things are. Okay, so same thing. These are salmon sweet peas. So we get everyone tucked in really nicely, and then I like to take my spray bottle here, which we can do both of these at the same time, and I just like to take my spray bottle and mist the top of my um, seed starting trays with a good coat of water, making sure that everything is nice and misted. Next, I'm going to place my humidity domes, which are these plastic little things that come with your seed starting trays a lot of times, and they just go right over the top, just like that. And then you want to put these somewhere in a bright location. Um, if you have a system of grow lights, that's honestly the best situation possible. Um, even you can start things like this out in a greenhouse. So if you have a nice greenhouse outside, you can start your seeds like this and put them in your greenhouse. For me, I have a grow light system um, that I am going to be setting up and showing you in a different video um, because I think that would make today's video too long. Um, but next week I will be showing you my grow light setup and then showing you how all of these things are doing. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of germination by next week. We'll have to see. That would be fun to see. Okay, so the flowers are all done, the pretty things. Next we're going to start our cabbage. And I'm going to fill, I have five trays here and five more seeds that I want to start, five more types of seeds that I want to start. So I am going to go ahead and just do one tray of each seed. So let's get our cabbage planted. Now cabbage wants to be planted um, a half an inch deep. That's more than I was expecting. I'm probably not going to plant mine that deep. Is it okay on a gardening channel if I'm just honest with you guys? I'm probably not going to plant mine quite that deep. Usually it goes by the seed. If the seed is bigger, it has more energy to push up through more soil. If the seed is smaller, it has less energy to push up through soil. Um, that's the general rule of thumb that I've always been taught and always gardened by. Um, but these last two things have proved me a liar simply because based on that, the fact that we had those giant seeds for the sweet peas that wanted to be a fourth of an inch deep and these tiny seeds, which apparently want to be a half of an inch deep. So you can do whatever you want. Follow, I would suggest just following the directions on the back of the package. They probably know what they're talking about. So our cabbage is planted. I'm gonna go ahead and just cover them over. Okay. 
Seed starting is honestly like a fairly quick and easy process. Seeds themselves are really quite inexpensive. Seed starting soil isn't that expensive. And your trays you can use from year to year. And really, they're not very expensive either. Um, so I find that even if you don't succeed 100% at starting seeds, it's not that big of an investment to just try and if you do end up succeeding, then you just got a whole bunch of plants for the fraction of the cost that you would to go out and buy them already sprouted and grown on for you. All right, let's do our cauliflower next. I'm honestly so excited about this because I have never grown cabbage or cauliflower or broccoli from seed. I usually always buy starts, um, most of the time because uh, I'm just not thinking about seed starting at the time that these need to be started yet. I'm usually like starting to itch to get in the garden, but I'm thinking about the summer garden. And just recently, I've really started to change my mindset of not just the summer garden, but the spring garden and the fall garden and gardening inside during the winter and really starting to grow food, at least a little bit of it, all year round. Okay. That's our cauliflower. Honestly, too, I have planted so many um, cabbage, cauliflower, kale already, so many different things, and I still have so many seeds left. Like it's really, it's really crazy whenever you start getting into it and realizing how much seeds cost versus plants and everything that you have to buy to seed, um, even do seed starting. It Even if you factor in grow lights, over time starting your own seeds can really be a lot more economical first off, but secondly, you can get really cool um, seeds and types of plants that you can't get normally if you're just buying plants. You're kind of at the mercy of whatever the grower is growing whenever you're buying plants. And whenever you start your own seeds, you can pick whatever varieties you want. You can try new things and um, that's really kind of cool about seed starting. Okay, in this one we're going to plant our broccoli. And speaking of planting seeds, if you start getting into saving seeds as well, um, you're really, really saving yourself some money. And not even just the money side of things, like there's something so satisfying and amazing about growing your own food. Um, saving the seed from that food and growing it again the next year and it's like this fully self-sufficient circle which is really cool. Now I feel like you can't get that with everything, um, all seeds, because some seeds have like different things where you can't really like save them and get the same thing the next year, but with some things you definitely can and it's definitely worth it and super cool to do. One thing that we don't think of as a seed, but it definitely is, is um, garlic. And garlic is something that I have not bought seed garlic in many, many years because every year I just set aside some of my garlic that I grew as seed garlic for the next year. And whenever you start growing things with that sort of mentality, if you grow your potatoes and you set aside enough potatoes as your seed potatoes the next year, it's really this cool thing where you don't have to go out and every year buy a whole bunch of seeds, a whole bunch of potatoes, garlic, not that it's super expensive anyway, but you just save yourself that time and that money and that energy by saving your own. I don't know. It's something that's just really cool to me.
Okay, so we got all of our seeds planted today, everything that I wanted to plant, and that honestly took me probably 10 minutes. I mean, it was super fast and easy. From here on, I'm just going to keep a really close eye on these. So these are going to go on my shelf that has some LED lights. Like I said, I'll show you that setup next week. And I'm going to make sure that these uh, that this soil is not drying out for these seeds because that's a very vital thing when you're seed starting is making sure that your soil does not dry out. So every couple of days, every day, depending on the weather and how dry it is in my house, I will be misting these down with the spray bottle just like I did today and making sure that that soil does not dry out. Now, as far as my seeds here that I have left over from my sweet peas, I am actually going to just put these in a pot with some soil and let them grow on. I think they're gonna be really pretty. I might build some sort of trellis in the middle out of sticks or something that they could grow up. Um, but I definitely don't want to waste these seeds that I've already soaked and there's a good many of them left. So I think I'm just going to put them in, pop, so I think I'm just going to pop them into some containers that I have lying around and let them germinate. Then I can put those containers out on the porch or wherever and have some sweet peas growing in containers. Now, last thing before we sign off on this video, I want to give you guys an update on the um, hydroponic systems that we have in the living room. Um, I want to show you all the seeds that we started two weeks ago and how they are doing. Okay, so starting here at the top, you can see we have quite a bit going on. The kids actually have a little bit of an experiment. That's what are in the pots there. Um, but in this I do here, we have our basil, which is still doing really good. Um, down here I have some dahlias that I just planted up yesterday, um, same method as today. And then over here we have some broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage that we started a couple of weeks ago, probably about three or four weeks ago now. They're doing great. This one in the back looks amazing. It looks just like a cabbage plant, which is so fun. Then in the tote box we have some... Um, we have some arugula growing right here, some basil in the back there, and this is mostly red lettuce. This is spinach. I think this is spinach. I'm not sure though. They don't look the same, so it may not be. Um, and then there's supposed to be some green romaine lettuce growing back here, but it has not sprouted just yet. In this little QEO system, we have some herbs. I believe over here on this side is the oregano. I think I have sage planted in these pods right here, but they're not doing much yet anyway. Um, in these pods is some basil. It's doing really good. Basil loves hydroponic systems, honestly. And the last three over here are cilantro, which I gave another try and still am failing on growing cilantro in my hydroponic systems. Down here in this one, this is where I planted some broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower again. It is all doing pretty good. Um, some of them got really leggy and I pulled them out and replanted them, but they're doing okay. Over here in this system, I did not show planting this system up two weeks ago, um, but a few days after I planted bok choy and um, some kale in this one. So that is a quick overview of how the hydroponic systems are doing. I can't wait to give you guys updates on how these do. Um, we're also going to have to start thinking about planting um, tomatoes and peppers soon to get those growing. Um, so it's all exciting. It's all exciting because the weather is starting to warm up a little bit and spring is coming. Um, so I had kind of a fun idea that I thought you guys might like to participate with. Um, if you guys have a hydroponic system and you have stuff growing in, in it right now and you would like to send me pictures of your system, what you have growing in it, what your setup looks like, I would love to see them and I would love to put them in a video. I think it would be really fun and inspiring to see each other's setups, see what kind of uh, systems you have, see what you're growing in your system and how they're doing. So I thought it would be really fun to share all of the photos that you send me in a video and we could talk through them and look at them all together. 
and just be inspired by each other's uh, spaces and what we're growing. If you guys would be interested in doing that, go ahead and send me an email with the photos that you have. Um, try to make sure that they are good photos, that they are good quality photos, and you can send them to the email that I will link in the description below. And if we have enough, we will put together a video um, just sharing some inspiration of each other's hydroponic setups. Well, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing some seed starting. Um, if you have any questions about hydroponics or about the seed starting that we did today, go ahead and put it in the uh, comment section below, and I will try to answer them as best I can. And we will see you in the next video, guys.